Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco. Uh, thanks for stopping in again. Uh, we've got another wine review, of course, right? That's what we do on the Leet Show, right? I guess. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so little stories to why I picked this wine today. I actually have one more wine from HEB Plus to do, and it's called the Texas Sweet Red. I'm a little concerned about it, but I did look them up, and I actually got varietals because it doesn't have anything on the bottle and I was surprised I was able to get a hold of at least on the on the website so that might be something I'll do next week um, so I'll probably do that next week but this uh, is one of my newest followers on Twitter on the 1337 wine account uh, they were our follower yesterday things started following me yesterday and it was funny because I, we had gotten the wine um, went to uh, World Market and Costco uh, <clears throat> for some stuff. So this is a world market wine. And uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool to uh, do this since they're one of my new followers. And I'll uh, give them a little shout out. Uh, it is at Explorador, just like it's spelt. So I'll, it'll be X-P-L-O-R-A-D-O-R. -E and I'll have that in me. Just put an at in front of their name. But um, I'll definitely let them know, give them a little direct message action that uh, I, I reviewed it. So let's go ahead and just jump on in. Okay, so it's the Explorador 2008 Malbec. Uh, it is from the Mendoza region of Argentina. And the, uh, the actual producer is Concha y Toro. Now this um, producer is actually out of Argentina. But this wine is from, uh, uh, Chile, I'm sorry, out of Chile. This wine is out of Argentina. So, um, so yeah, it's six ninety seven at World Market, and uh, let's check it out. When I opened it, took a little, took a little sniff there, and uh, try not to use other people's phrases and terms. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so I took a little sniff from the bottle, and it was it smelled pretty good. I mean, the initial open was just kind of like, but then I gave it like a minute or two, and it started opening up like a little bit. So it smelled pretty, pretty good. I've had it open for a couple hours. Actually, I've had it open for almost three hours now. A little 10, 15 in the morning action. Picking up the alcohol for sure. Going by what the website says. Let's see what the bottle says for alcohol. Sometimes they hide it on you. We had a wine that was hidden style. 13.5. Okay. Got that one and a half, at least for United States. Could be a little more. So I'm getting kind of a powdered chocolate uh, nose. Getting some some red fruit, kind of a dark red. But I'm definitely getting alcohol a lot, and I don't, I don't know. I'm getting some dark red fruits and a little bit of chocolate on the nose. Um, it's like powdered chocolate, almost like say like uh, like say a Nesquik chocolate milk powder type of thing. All right, well, let's check it out. Some tannins, but you should. It's 2008. Um, let's see. Got a little bit of dairy. That, that what I call the American cheese 
aspect. And that's from the, the oak aging, I'm sure. But it's not aged in oak very much, so it's, it's very, it was very slight. Getting a bit of the alcohol. It's tasty. Um, I'm getting just... I'm just getting kind of fruit, but honestly, the alcohol just seems to be, alcohol and the tannins just seem to be overshadowing anything else. I mean, it's got flavor to it, and it's, it's, it's enjoyable to the point that, you know, it's, it's not like, it's not like it's, the tannins are horrible. I mean, you feel the tannins, but in fact, the tannins are pretty much gone by now, um, uh, I'm getting kind of a, you know, I get the fruit, but nothing, nothing stands out fruit wise. It's just kind of like, yeah, it's a little bit fruity. Uh, you can definitely taste the alcohol. Uh, and again, it's not overpowering, but it's just, it's just enough to, to notice it. You feel that burn. Um, get a little bit of dairy aspect, which you know, I seem to keep finding a lot. <clears throat> In these wines, so it must be just something my palate just picks up on. Um, it's more that 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 feeling of of eating cheese. That's what I mean by the dairy aspect. Oh, I just got a little bit of pepper, like just. It's a hint, a hint of black pepper in there. See, maybe she's needs to open up more. It's opening up a little bit better. Um, like I said, it was, just, it was like a hint of like, like somebody just threw some black pepper in your nose or in your mouth and you just like, it was like a little bit of a whiff there. But um, it's not bad. I mean, six ninety seven. I'd probably give it an eighty four. Uh, yeah, I'll give it an eighty four. It's it's definitely drinkable. Um, it's not it's not horrible. It's two thousand eight, so it's really young. It probably hasn't had a lot of time to really develop much. Um, so yeah, I mean, it it tastes kind of like just like any other wine. You know what I mean? It's not. It's, it, there's nothing spectacular about it, but then again, it's nothing bad. It's just, you know, it's it's wine. It's, you know, it's, it's all right. I said to give it an 84. I mean, it's a $7 wine. It's not it's not super expensive. If you're, you know, grilling or got some hamburgers or eating some pizza, you know, you want, some, want a wine that's a little bit better than, say, you know, the really horrible, like, wine that's out there that's, at this price, by the way, I mean, this is better than, in my opinion, things like, well, I think Barefoot's cheaper, but things like Barefoot and, and um, uh, Yellowtail and stuff like that. I think it's a step above, but it's not like, it's not like, you know, Yellowtail and Barefoot are here and this is, the, it's here. It's more like Barefoot and Yellowtail's here and Explorer is there, you know. It's like a little bit, like a notch above. All right, so a uh, few things. Like I said, it's from the Mendoza region in Argentina. Uh, it's 100% Malbec. It's according to the website. Um, it didn't say, and the website doesn't say anything about vintages. It just says, you know, here's here's our wines. Um, now, one thing to realize about Southern Hemisphere, their seasons are different. Like, it's hot here. It's July. No, I'm sorry, June. And it's actually a little hotter than it should be in San Antonio. But in Argentina and Chile, it's hopefully not 100 degrees. But it's not exactly going to, you know, it, it's going to be cooler there because it's kind of the opposite season. It's more, I say, well, it's fall there effectively because it hasn't turned to summer here yet, so it's not winter there yet. But um, so this this stuff is harvested in late March and early April. Uh, it spends six to eight months in French oak and then three more in stainless steel. So I, I like that a lot because um, you allow the oak to hopefully impart its characteristics on the wine without overpowering it, but trying to hopefully let the let the juice 
uh, handle, you know, let the juice come out and, and have it, you know, and show itself. Again, it's really young. I would say um, it probably would it probably would do well to, to age another year. And then remember, this is harvested about this is harvested six months prior to what most wines, you know, the wines in Northern Hemisphere are. So it was harvested in 2008, March, April. So it's had over a year since harvest to be bottled and age and all that. So, I mean, that's why Southern Hemisphere wines come out earlier. It's kind of like, you know, getting that new car, that 2010 car in, like, May. The car's manufacturer decides, you know what, 2009, we're writing that, we're writing that model year off. We're going to release the 2010s um, in, like, May. Seriously? <laughs> um, so this is kind of like that idea, you know, Southern Hemisphere wines come out a lot sooner than uh, Northern Hemisphere just because that's how it is. I mean, they, they're, they're, their uh, harvest season is six months before the Northern Hemisphere. Um, let's see. Uh, so I said the companies from Chile, or the, the, the parent company, Concha de Toro, they, uh, they're founded in 1883, and uh, according to their website, they are the number one wine importer uh, or number one imported wine from Chile. Um, I just really think it should have more to it. Yeah, I'm getting a little more on the nose. Again. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I didn't get the pepper this time. So, I don't know. If if we let it stay open, maybe decanted it so it got really hit the surface area, it'd probably do a little bit better. But it's not a bad wine. 84 sounds like a fair score for me on that. So, so yeah. Um, let's see what else. Let's see if they have anything on here that talks about what you're supposed to taste. Da -da 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 -da. Fruit, subtle spice, and a tantalizing, juicy finish. Yada, yada. No, not, nothing really there. All right, so what else? Um, hey, viewership is going up. Uh, podcast viewers, or at least Blip TV you, uh, viewers, I didn't really look at the drill down to what's iTunes and or podcasts and what's um, uh, Blip TV actual viewers. It's kind of confusing to me, but um, overall viewers, we're starting to get the double digits now. We're starting to get... 10, 12, 15 viewers on a normal basis than the 8, 9, or 7, and then you get like a spike on one because I happen to title something, it's peanut butter jelly time. Um, uh, people probably thinking, oh, it's the peanut butter jelly uh, jelly time video. Yeah, that's kind of why I use that one. Um, the, uh, the website starting to get more traction. I uh, really appreciate that, you know, getting people from all over the world coming to the website um, it's pretty amazing uh, to look at the IP addresses because um, I do I look at I look to see where, where people are, are coming in from you have, you're able to do that when you own your own website or actually the stat counter thing you, you, you can insert the code on there you can see where all you can see all the IP addresses and you can see you know what part of the country or what part of the world and it's really interesting you know and I'm, I'm getting of course San Antonio get a lot of people there because that's where my my main, my main base is you know I'm getting Chicago area because I got friends up there <coughs> I'm getting uh, Belgium, so Belgium, shout out to you guys. Uh, I'm getting uh, 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 South America. I should, it, well, no, was it Argentina or Chile? So I think somebody from there is watching it. Um, you know, all over the country. So I mean, it's it's really kind of exciting to see you know new areas of the world or new areas of the country that you hadn't seen before. You're like, oh, I got a new city that that's all of a sudden watching it. Um, so to everybody out there, I mean, there's people in Seattle, there's people in uh, California, there's people in Ohio, there's people in New York and New Jersey. Uh, some of that might be family, but that's cool. Uh, Florida. Uh, so those are areas of the country uh, or states that, that I've, I've seen people uh, watch it. So it's real exciting. So thank you. Uh, keep telling your friends. As always, Twitter me up. Friend me up on Facebook. You can email me. Uh, send me messages on Twitter. My follow follow Friday today was all about people I've had conversations with uh, through Twitter, whether direct messages or um, uh, replies, the at symbol, or uh, people that retweeted to say, hey, watch this episode. So 
retweet. That's the best way to get more people to watch is retweet. Say, hey, watch this thing. So um, I think they call this door the Explorer door. How about that? Um, I guess that's it. Thank you for, very, uh, thank you for coming in. And uh, we will see everybody again next time.